just bask in this feeling of thanksgiving, this awareness of thanksgiving, of giving thanks for everyone and everything in life. Every experience we have is for our own good. Everything is in perfect divine order. And as we develop an attitude of gratitude, of giving thanks for every thing, every activity of life, our hearts get lighter. And lighter. The heaviness leaves us, and we are at peace. There is nothing to worry about. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to be angry. We see it all as God. We see it all as good. God is good, absolute good. And as we make God our partner in every activity of life, we carry that goodness with us. In every thought, in every word, in every action, we are expressing that goodness of God. We are expressing that love that is God. God is love. And love is accepting everything unconditionally. Loving is letting go of all the emotional attachments. Love is letting go of fear. Love is God. Let go. And let God. What is it you're worried about? Is it finances, or health, or relationships? Let go, and let God understand the nature of life. Learn the rules of life, the laws that govern our existence. Learn them, and then let them go to God. Feel the peace that passes understanding, the peace that is the essence of God. Love brings peace. Love is the active ingredient. Peace is passive. in your love and your kindness and your generosity. Be peaceful. Meditate. Be still. And know God. God is a movement. Now 
it's time for the rest. Stop thinking. Stop moving. Just be. Be still. is it to sit going with no movement with no thought it's not so easy in the beginning but with practice it becomes easier and easier and you become more and more in tune with God You become more and more in tune with love. You become more and more in tune with life. Be still and know God. Practice the presence of God in the stillness and then carry it with you into the activity of your day. God is a movement and a rest. Take time to rest and then your movement will be peaceful and loving and joyful. This is the way of the Christ, the way of the disciple, the way to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. This is the promise of Jesus Christ, and in his name, in his nature, in his presence, we pray. Amen. Thanksgiving. What a wonderful concept. What a wonderful way of life the attitude of gratitude. But is this the way most people live? Giving thanks for every activity in life? How can you be thankful for September 11th or the terrorist threat that lingers in the minds of most people? You can only be afraid of death if what? If you're alive. <laughs> How long will you live? Forever. 
that's the idea we have to get. And when we do, the fear of death becomes no thing. It's nothing. It's a ghost. But if you're oriented to death, then you have an attitude of death instead of of gratitude. <coughs> the attitude of death comes from fear. And fear is the core emotion that breeds anger, breeds guilt, resentment, envy, greed, hatred, pride, all the negative attitudes that cause life to be miserable. If someone is oriented toward misery, in our modern day slang, we say they have an attitude. How many of you know someone who has an attitude? <laughs> Usually it's anger, and underlying all anger is fear and guilt. An angry person is filled with fear and guilt. Most Americans are angry right now. They want revenge. They want Ben Laden dead. They want the Taliban dead, Taliban or whatever they are. <laughs> they want to terrorize the terrorists. That's an attitude. And your attitude determines how your life is lived. If your attitude is kill, then your life is full of killing. What brings back to you what you send out? The law? The Lord? God, if you're Judeo-Christian? Allah, if you're Muslim? Buddha, if you're Buddhist? Krishna, if you're Hindu? Whatever you perceive the Lord to be. What's similar between all these names for God? Ah. God, Allah, Buddha, Krishna. They are all the same. All full or all some. What is it? The Battle Hymn of the Republic says, trampling out the vintage with his terrible swift sword. That's a battle hymn. And it brings back battle, not goodle. <laughs> Sending out fear and anger has to bring back things that aren't so good. One of my favorite movies is Caddyshack. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think almost everyone has seen that movie, even if you don't play golf. And one of the classic scenes in the movie is the segment where Bill Murray, the greenskeeper, agrees to caddy for the priest who wants to play, even though there's a giant thunderstorm coming. And they play, the priest plays, and Bill Murray caddies for him, and he's hitting the ball like he's never hit it before. It's so beautiful. Every shot goes right where he wants it. Every putt goes in the hole. And the storm keeps getting stronger and stronger, and frogs jump out of the hole, and <laughs> water washes over everything, and he's just playing the game of his life. And everything is going right, even with all the wind and rain and lightning and thunder, until they come to the final hole. And all the priest has to do is sink a short little putt to break the record. And what happens? He misses the putt. And then what? Then he's struck by lightning. That's a terrible swift sword. Why was he struck? Because when he missed the putt, what happened? He got angry. And he held his putter up in the air and he cursed. <laughs> and the lightning struck him. 
the curse, the attitude, the anger of the priests is what caused the lightning bolt. God didn't do it to him. He did it to himself. And we all do it to ourselves. I couldn't help but draw a parallel this week when the plane crashed in Queens, Rockaway Beach, the home of the national hero, the fireman, Mike Moran, and his emotional address on national television at the war memorial service in New York. Cursed Ben Laden, <laughs> called him not so nice names, and invited him to come to Queens to Rockaway Beach and get him. Uh, I'm not saying that Ben Laden did that or that the crash was anything but an accident. What I'm saying is, is that when you curse someone or something, who are you cursing? Is there any such thing as an accident? If you believe there is, then you believe in a chaotic universe. I believe the universe is in perfect order. How many of you saw the meteor shower this morning at 4 o'clock? Quite a few. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. It was one of the clearest nights that I've, I remember seeing in, in Birmingham. You could see all the stars and you could see them shooting across the sky. It was pretty awesome. Ah, some. But that was not chaos. It was perfect order. Last weekend, Jane and I went to the mountains, the Smokies. Rumor has it that we were here and I was in a bear outfit. <laughs> but I was really up there. <laughs> <laughs> in a bear outfit, <laughs> scaring all the tourists. <laughs> we were in Gatlinburg, and we went to the aquarium. How many of you have been to the aquarium in Gatlinburg? If you get up there, you have to go. It's created by Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> you always have a choice of what you believe, but the aquarium is a unique one. It's the most unique that we've seen, has some unbelievable exhibits of marine life, some things that only God could imagine. But what I saw was the incredible order of all of God's universe. I see it in everything, in every event. Yes, even in September 11th, in the crash. I see it in every wave on the beach, in every flower, in every tree, in every minute of every day. I see the order in every life that's ever been lived, that's being lived now, that it will ever be lived, and it's all perfect. It's all in order. Can you see that? Can you see the order in everything? Then how can you help but be grateful? How can you have an attitude in the presence of gratitude? You can't. It's either one or the other. You can't have both. You can experience both, but not at the same time. So you have a choice in every moment what you're going to experience. And every choice you make sets up the next experience. If you're angry, you're calling forth the next lightning bolt, the next plane crash, or the next terrorist attack. If your attitude is kill, then you're causing killing, just as surely as if you pulled a trigger. The beauty of it is 
that you can cause the opposite just as easily. You can cause life. You can cause peace and love and joy. <coughs> For you are the creator. You're made in the image and likeness of God. You're not just playing God. You are God. You are the Lord of your universe. What have you created? As Jesus said, by your fruits, you are known. Look at your life and you see what you have created. If you like what you've created, be thankful. If you don't like what you see, what? Be thankful. <laughs> Be thankful that you can change it. The activity of being thankful will open you up to be able to make the changes. If you don't like what you see and you have an attitude about it, if you're angry or fearful or you feel guilty, then you're just creating more of the same. The attitude brings more lightning bolts and more plane crashes and more terror into your life. It's attitude or gratitude, your choice. But, ego says, it's not so easily, easy. Actually, ego says it's hard. It's hard to be grateful when everybody around you is so negative. Whatever you say, you go. <laughs> if you say it's hard, it's hard. And actually, I believe it's easier to be grateful when everyone else around you is negative, when everyone else around you has an attitude. You can be grateful that you're not like everyone else. <laughs> And that's the greatest cause of downfall in all of life, wanting to be like everyone else. Why do kids start smoking? Because everybody else is doing it. Why do they take drugs? Same reason. Body piercing and drinking and promiscuous sex and cults, religion. Almost all beliefs come from looking around, seeing what everybody else is doing or believing, and then joining in or joining out. It all comes from looking out, judging by the appearance. The world is a head trip. To be in the world and not of the world, as Jesus said he was, you have to be out of your head. And if you're out of your head, where's the only other place to be? In your heart. And that's where gratitude is. Out of your head and into your heart. That's where love is. Isn't that the center of love for us? The heart? That's where all good things, all God things are. The negative emotions are all in your head. All imbalance in life comes from your head, from your conditioned beliefs, from your ego. People who are on a head trip don't like to hear this. They're not here today. <laughs> I've had many intellectuals tell me that I'm crazy. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's my response. See, I'm grateful for what they think. I'm grateful if they like me, and I'm grateful if they don't like me. And what's the magic in that? Being grateful, being full of greatness. You're thankful for everything. Thank you, Father. It's easy to say that when things are going your way. There's no reward, Jesus said, for loving the good things. Anyone can do that. Love what? 
the difficult things, the not so good things, then you're really loving. Be grateful for the not so good things, then you're really thankful. Some say to make a list of all the things you're thankful for. By its very nature, what are you excluding? What you think is bad. When you count your blessings, if you don't include the challenges, you're not seeing clearly. I'm going to do an exercise during the Thanksgiving Eve service Wednesday night that will include everything in your life. And if you're having any problem, you might want to join us for that service, 7 o'clock Wednesday. Real growth comes from overcoming. If life is an eternal growth process, which I believe it is, then we will eternally be overcoming challenges. Isn't that exciting? (laughs) Intellect says, no, I don't want to do that. (laughs) But the heart says, yes, I'm thankful for all of that. If you don't have any challenges, you're dead. But instead of seeing them as challenges, you can see them as opportunities for growth. Some of us have health challenges, an opportunity for us to grow in our understanding of health. Some of us have financial challenges, an opportunity to grow in our understanding of prosperity. Some of us have relationship challenges, an opportunity to grow in our understanding of people and and of ourselves. Can you be grateful for all these opportunities for growth? You can, unless you have an attitude. Attitude or gratitude, that's your choice. Fear and anger and guilt or peace and love and joy. Seems like a logical choice, doesn't it? The logical choice would be gratitude. And that's where the problem lies. It's not logical. Making the choice in your mind, then you're also having to deal with appearances of duality, of good and bad, and right and wrong. The logical decision tries to keep the good and throw out the bad. And in so doing, it gives power to the bad. The heart decision includes everything. There's no good and bad. There's just good. It's all good. Intellect has a hard time with that. In fact, intellect will never get it. It's impossible. Intellect can get gratitude and attitude, but it can't get gratitude or attitude. Intellect says some things are good and some things are bad. That's just the way it thinks. The heart knows that it's all good. It's all God. There are no ifs, ands, or buts in truth. It's all, that stuff is all intellectual. And it's okay part of our growth. It's part of the challenge of life, and we can give thanks for it. Intellect is not bad. When I talk about intellect, the intellectuals think, I think, they're wrong. (laughs) And to me, there is no right or wrong. If you're intellectual, you're intellectual. That's all. It's not a judgment. It's not bad or wrong. It's just intellectual. (laughs) But to the intellectual, I'm wrong because they know that they're not bad. And they don't realize that I'm not, too. That's why Jesus said, you can't get to heaven in the intellect, or words to that effect. If you have gratitude and attitude, 
If you're thankful for some things and judgmental about others, I say that's an opportunity for growth. It's a challenge, if you want to call it that. If you're happy being intellectual, that's okay. I love you anyway, in every way. And I'm grateful that you're learning and growing, as we all are. I'm grateful for everything. So let's take a moment to close this lesson by <coughs> tuning in to what we're grateful for, but not leaving out anything, any challenges in life. First, we want to let go of everything that we've heard this morning to realize that what's right for each of us will be received and re retained within ourselves and what's wrong or what we think is not right for us at this time will be released. We give thanks that we're all growing in our own way, in our own time, that there is no right or wrong, no good or bad. It's all right. It's all good. And when we can begin to see that, when we can begin to feel that in our hearts, then we begin to lighten up. We become enlightened. We become lifted up in peace and love and joy. There's no more judgment. There's no more anger, there's no more fear, there's no more resentment or jealousy or envy. All of those things are of the past. They don't exist anymore. Right here, right now, I am at peace. I let go and I let God, I let good rule my life. I stop seeing with my head and I begin to feel with my heart. And I express my feelings, my love and my joy and my peace to everyone. I begin to express my gratitude in every word I say, in every thought I think, in every action I take. I'm grateful for life and I know that life is eternal and I am forever grateful. This is the greatness of God, the greatness of the realization of who we really are, God's children, God's image and likeness. I am thankful for that. I am the image and likeness of God. Let's affirm that together. I am the image and likeness of God. I see only God in everything I think, say, or do. Together, I see only God in everything I think, say, or do. And I am grateful. I am grateful. And so it is.